The Last Human Driver, a video essay. Did you know that low income Americans are being chauffeured around like millionaires? And what if I told you in a few years, owning a car will be as antiquated as owning a horse? What does the future really look like? None of us really truly know. But we can make educated guesses based on what we see around us all the time. You see, I drive a Tesla as an Uber driver here in upstate New York. I'd say 60, 70, 80% of my 130,000 miles are using Tesla's full self-drive. That's the autonomous functionality where I just hit a button and the car goes. I see this change coming every single day. I see people needing to get to work, ordering an autonomous car that just so happens to have a driver. So the technology is moving faster and faster and faster. We all see it. We all hear it. And it's just kind of nagging at us right in the back of our brain. Something's happening and we all know it. Now, driving, driving a car, it's pretty simple, but it's extremely dangerous. 40,000 Americans die every year on the road. Yet nearly everyone drives from teenagers to senior citizens. So the question is, what will happen when humans don't drive? Artificial intelligence is learning to drive a car. It's not perfect yet, but it's really close. And robotics are replacing our human basic motor skills. It's becoming faster and better than us at responding and reacting. And so Waymo, Tesla, Uber, Lyft, Amazon, they all see it. And so the goal is to remove the driver, me and you from the equation. Now, owning a car is extremely expensive. It's not as cheap as what it used to be. It's maybe upwards of around $1,000 a month to own a car. That's payments, insurance, maintenance, it's, it just continues to increase in costs. And even a cheap paid off used car is still expensive. So for working people, cars are like financial anchors. It's not easy if you're making 20, 30, $40,000 a year to buy and own and maintain a car. So I can see the future generations asking, will I really need a car? Now, what I've seen as an Uber driver, it's really interesting. I thought when I became an Uber driver, I would be taking people to the airport or taking drunks home from bars. But the reality is I take a lot of low income, hardworking Americans that can't quite afford a car. I take them to work. I take them to the grocery store. It's extremely common. Now, you might think like a $15 Uber ride a couple of miles is really expensive. And it is if you have a car and you're comparing those two things. But if you don't have a car, if you just took two rides every day, that's like $900 a month, less than that $1,000. But that's not really the reality, actually. An Uber to work, you might take just to make sure you get there on time, but you might catch a ride home with a friend. You might carpool. Um, you might take the bus. You might walk. You might ride a bike. So it becomes extremely affordable when you're only taking 20, 30, 40 Ubers a month compared to owning a car. And that's not even the real cost of owning a car. As much as we all like to drive, a car takes up time and energy. It is cost us productivity, sitting in our car going five miles an hour, sitting in traffic. What I notice is that not only are these people who catch Ubers to and from work, or to the grocery store, not only are they getting some of their financial freedom back because they have this incremental cost as opposed to a, a long term fixed cost. They're getting their time back. They're going to the store and getting in the back of a car and being chauffeured like a millionaire. So there's this middle class bubble where owning a car is everything. And rich people get to be driven. And poor people get to be driven. door to door service, no parking, no stress. Now imagine those rides, instead of costing $15, they cost $5. That's a real possibility. Because 10 of those $15 are because of me, the human. I get as an Uber driver, about half of that $15. So seven, $8 goes to me and the other seven or $8 goes to Uber. 
But a lot of that seven or eight dollars that goes to Uber is insurance costs. So if I'm out of the equation, it gets cheaper. And if the insurance cost drops because autonomous artificial intelligence robotics cars are safer than human drivers, insurance costs drop. No driver, less insurance, lower costs. This new mobility economy is forming $5 rides anywhere in town. The car you own becomes optional. And the car that you ride in or the car that you summon will become the new norm. Now, let's let's go back in time. The US was built for cars, not for trains. Why? I think it's because of World War Two. You see, Germany, Japan, Europe, Asia, devastated, destroyed by war, their economies, their infrastructure, everything. So when they had to rebuild, they rebuilt around mass transit. It's economical, it works great. And we see it today. It's really, truly amazing. During that same time, the 40s and 50s and 60s, America was extremely wealthy and growing. And we built everything around the car. We built everything around two people, the nuclear family, whatever, getting into a car and driving everywhere we need to go. Big parking lots, big malls, big highways. And it worked. However, that's, that's going to change. That's going to change in a big way. Imagine 10 years from now, our cities being designed for autonomous cars, the mass transit system, not being some fixed infrastructure on rail or in the sky or in buses, but in autonomous cars driving everybody around as efficiently as possible. So I could see it first starting with like this assisted driving everywhere. And that's kind of where we're at today with a little bit of robo taxis and, and FSDs and things like that. Then we're kind of dipping our toe into the water with Waymo would be autonomous fleets in cities. Then we'll get to full networks, no traffic, no lights, no lines on the road, autonomous only cities. It's coming. It'll be better for pedestrians. It'll be safer. That's the direction that we will be going. Roads will be redesigned for machines, not human mistakes. Parking lots will become pickup zones. Garages will disappear from homes and apartments. Trips between small cities will become effortless. You just order a car instead of ordering an Uber to the bus stop, then the bus stop to the next city, then from the bus stop to the next place you want to go, you go door to door. And the time that we once spent driving becomes time regained. Drivers like me will face a crossroads. Instead of being an Uber driver, I might be able to manage a whole fleet of cars. There might be, for at least a little while, a lot of wealthy people where drivers will drive for ex special experiences or something like that. The human connection will still have value and a friendly conversation beats any algorithm. However, we have a problem with all of this. As utopian as that world sounds, there's a dystopian undertone to it. Americans, we love our cars. It defines our identity of who we are. But car ownership may give way to access. Freedom could mean summoning, not steering. That's both exciting and a little unsettling. The future isn't guaranteed or fast. Edge cases and safety challenges still remain huge. Snow, construction, the unpredictability of AI will still confuse things. Car culture won't vanish overnight. We love our control and we love our open roads. Regulation and liability will slow the rollout. Rural areas may be left behind. Equity and access still matter. Millions of driving jobs hang in the balance like mine. Centralized systems risk new forms of control. But what happens when the networks shut down? You see, I think COVID-19 was an eye-opening experience and maybe the one thing that prevents this all from happening. Because what we saw with COVID-19 was with the flip of the switch, the government can shut everything down. And maybe we as Americans don't want to give up our freedom of mobility and driving a vehicle quite yet. Maybe we'll need backup options like bikes and buses or walking. 
<laughs> Can you imagine Americans walking? Freedom means redundancy, not dependence. So we're going to evolve. Some of us will resist. We'll learn, adapt. We'll find new roles. I'm not afraid of what's coming, even though I am losing my job. I see opportunity in this transition. The end of driving isn't the end of people. It's just another chapter in our human creativity. Even in a driverless world, stories still move us. Between my Uber rides, and while I still get to drive, I'll try to keep sharing them. <laughs>